Hey everybody, this is Gregory from DAP University. So in this video, I'm really excited to announce that I'm creating my own token on the blockchain. And I'm gonna give you a chance to own some of these tokens. So stick around for the rest of this video because I'm gonna explain how you can do that. And I'm also gonna take you behind the scenes to show you how I built this token and kind of show you my thought process so that you might be able to do something like this yourself. All right, so before we get into all that, if you're new around here, hey, like I said, I'm Gregory from DAP University. On this channel, I teach you how to become a blockchain developer. So if that's something that you're interested in, click the like button down below and click subscribe. That really helps these videos get found so that more people can become blockchain developers. So I'm creating my own token. So I'm gonna clarify that really quickly. I'm not creating a cryptocurrency and I'm not holding an ICO or anything crazy like that, at least not at this point in time. So what am I doing then? So I'm creating a membership token, all right? This is gonna be a digital asset powered by smart contracts that lives on the blockchain, specifically Ethereum. This crypto token is gonna work a lot like CryptoKitties. So if you've ever seen that before, they're basically digital cats that live on the blockchain. So the technology that powers CryptoKitties is what's called a non-fungible token or an ERC721 token. And instead of owning some sort of collectible, what you're owning in this case is actually membership, all right? And whenever you get a token like this, it grants you special rights and privileges uh, within uh, the community. And specifically, you know, for this token that I'm creating, it's going to be a DAP University token. And whenever someone holds one of these tokens, you know, it's going to give them special rights and privileges and things like that. And also just uh, be an authentication of their membership among the community itself. All right. So uh, this ERC721 standard on Ethereum, I'm going to talk about more about that later in the video when I get into the technical details and show you how I built the token. This standard is being used widely by people who are trying to create digital assets uh, and represent value on the blockchain that isn't currency. So for example, Nike Shoes recently came out and said that they are uh, coming out with a patent to tokenize their shoes on Ethereum with you know digital assets like this, all right? And you see other people who are doing things like software licenses and all kinds of other things uh, that are powered by smart contracts with non-fungible token uh, standards, okay? And I think it's a really useful mechanism. And that's exactly why I'm creating this for DAP University. So how can you get one of these tokens? Well, everyone who joins my new program, Blockchain Master University, is going to get one of these as a membership token. All right. That program is coming out on January 29th. You can sign up with the link down below over at dappuniversity.com forward slash sign up. So this is going to be a community focused program where you can get real time help uh, mastering blockchain and you also collaborate with other people. And uh, the core of this program is actually going to be blockchain based membership. And that's what this token is for. It's going to be a membership token. So whenever you get one, you'll be able to hold it inside of your wallet and show that you actually have access to this, that you are a member. So yeah, this token is going to be the core of the membership of this community. And this is something I'm really excited about because like I said, this is a very useful mechanism in my opinion on how you could actually use the blockchain uh, in a real world application to actually govern communities and prove your membership and get access to special rights and privileges based on holding the token itself. All right. Um, so now what I want to do is shift over to my computer and talk you through how I built this uh, and kind of give you some pointers on what I did. And I wanna give you some resources that you can use to build something like this yourself. Um, if you have some sort of mechanism in mind uh, that you can use a token for in your own project. So how would you code one of these things yourself? Well, let me pull up my whiteboard here and explain how it works. So an ERC721 token or a crypto collectible or a digital asset, like whatever you really wanna call it, um, is essentially just powered by a smart contract. So I'll put that on the screen here, say smart contract. Change the size a little more. All right. And this smart contract uh, is responsible for a few different things, okay? Number one, it keeps track of how many people actually hold these tokens, all right? So I'll put that here. All right, tracks token holders. And essentially that means that it knows how many token each person has, and also it knows the specific tokens that each person has, because ERC-721 is what's called a non-fungible token standard. That means that 
the tokens uh, have a unique ID. All right, so I'll explain that a little more. If you go look on a website like erc721.org, it explains the ERC721 standard. I've also got a uh, video tutorial, sorry, <laughs> video tutorial that I show you how to build an ERC721 uh, token from scratch and actually sell it in a marketplace. So you can check out that tutorial here if you want to. All right, so how this differs from other types of tokens is let's say you have a cryptocurrency. All of the tokens within a cryptocurrency are worth the same, right? So like, Let's take a cryptocurrency like OMG, for example, or maybe even Bitcoin. So I say OMG because it's actually a t an Ethereum token, but Bitcoin is a different cryptocurrency. So each of those uh, coins is worth the same as every other coin. One Bitcoin is worth one Bitcoin. All right. And for this reason, uh, you know, a Bitcoin doesn't have an ID, for example. It's just a certain amount of Bitcoin. It's fungible. But a non-fungible token actually has an ID or a unique name. Think about it like a baseball card, for example, right? Like you would have a unique baseball card for a specific player. Um, and in this case, you have a unique token for uh, the individual who owns it. Okay. So the smart contract keeps track of who owns the tokens and which tokens they, they own, right? So tracks token holders, and it also tracks uh, which tokens they own. So whenever you create this smart contract, you put it on the Ethereum network, and anybody who you know uh, owns the tokens will be able to see them in their wallet, right? And there's a few different ways that they can actually get them. Uh, so in the case of the token that I'm generating for Blockchain Mastery University, I'm going to actually mint tokens for people whenever they join. Okay, so whenever they join the program, uh, they will get a token that they can hold in their wallet, like on their phone, for example, and they'll be able to, you know, open it and, you know, see their token, see their membership, and this token will allow them to do, uh, you know, special things within the community. So if you want to build one of these smart contracts yourself, I highly recommend checking out the Open Zeppelin uh, library. Okay, so uh, this name of this uh, library has changed a little bit over time. Now it's called Open Zeppelin Contracts. It used to be called Open Zeppelin Solidity. Um, so anyways, you can go on GitHub and check this out. It's just github.com forward slash Open Zeppelin and then find the Open Zeppelin uh, Contracts repo. So inside of here, they actually have a way for you to create ERC721 tokens uh, just out of the box. You can just take their libraries and customize them for yourself. Okay, So I'll show you that. You can go to Contracts. Um, let's see here. We can go to uh, see token, all right, and then also ERC721. There you go. And inside of here, you'll see all these different uh, libraries that you can pull into your own projects and create your own ERC721 tokens and customize them for yourself. You'll see all these different options like uh, mintable tokens, pausable tokens, innumerable tokens, burnable, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, so I'm actually going to pull up the code uh, for my own token that I've been creating, kind of walk you through it. Um, so that you can get some ideas on how you can create one of these yourself. All right. All right. So I've got the code from my token pulled up here. Uh, let me just collapse this down to one tab. So anyways, this is the flattened final file for the project itself. And this is actually just uh, some test code. I haven't finally uh, customized this. This isn't the finished product, but this is uh, mostly the token that's going to exist. Okay. So essentially what you can do is you can... Uh, you know, leverage these ERC721 contracts that are in the Open Zeppelin library and pull them in your own project. So you can just import the files. I'll actually go here. Um, you can just import them into your project like this. Uh, you can see ERC721 full, ERC721 possible. Uh, you can pull in, you can make the tokens mintable. Uh, and I've kind of done that in a very customized fashion for this particular token. And also you can uh, make the contracts ownable so that like someone uh, is an owner of the contract and they can have special privileges like uh, onboarding uh, minters and pausers and things like that in the token. So uh, like I said, I, what I've chosen to do is uh, I haven't completely just taken all the code from Open Zeppelin and like you know, shoved it in my own project without customizing anything. I've created some custom functionality here. So uh, I'll show you what, what that is, right? So like I said, this is just some, some test uh, data. I'm actually going to change this name later. It's, it's still a work in progress, but um, I am going to create a way to mint tokens, all right? So that essentially means that whenever... Uh, 
new people get tokens, they're going to be created on the fly or generated. And whenever that happens, the total amount of tokens is going to increase. And that's not such a big deal for ERC-721 tokens. Since it's not really a cryptocurrency, uh, you don't have to worry about the economics of the total supply of the tokens really changing in this case. Um, so that's fine. So there is an uh, uh, ERC-721 mintable contract in Open Zeppelin. I've chosen not to import that into this project. I've taken bits and pieces from it. Uh, so I've created my own mint function that essentially uh, takes the person that is going to receive the tokens and also specifies the token URI. All right. And I've added my own code here to uh, basically, you know, onboard people who can perform some of these functions for me, like people who can mint tokens and pause the tokens and things like that. So I can explain that more in depth. Uh, I won't spend all day on it. Essentially, the idea is um, if you have a mintable token in Open Zeppelin, it allows you to onboard other people to mint tokens for you, but they can also invite other minters. So what I've decided to do is basically just create a way that uh, only I can add new people as mentors and only I can remove them, right? So they can't invite their own friends and they can't remove me as a mentor uh, either, right? So essentially I'm a top level admin and I can only perform these functions. So let's see here. Um, you know, I've written some bunch of tests for this just to make sure that the behavior is the way that I want to. You know, I write the tests a lot like I show you in the other tutorials for these kinds of things. This is kind of a big, hairy test. I might even refactor this, but this was just a sanity check to kind of make sure that the tokens uh, work the way that I want them to, or the token, I should say. All right, so let me talk about the other part of this ERC721 equation, which is uh, the metadata. All right, you'll see this uh, mint with token with, or yeah, mint with token URI here. So essentially, uh, whenever you're creating an ERC721 token, since they have an ID, people um, really associate that with an image, okay? they Like if you buy a crypto kitty, you see a picture of a cat that sort of represents the token in the person's mind. So I'm gonna go back to uh, my whiteboard and talk about this other half of the equation. So you've got the smart contract, you've got the token holders, right? So the other part of the equation is the actual metadata itself that is associated with the token. So I'm gonna pull this over. Let's see if I can do that. There we go. Uh, so anyways, yeah, the token metadata. Um, so let me actually saw this here on OpenSea. They have some pretty good uh, instructions for how to create your own metadata. So essentially, like, uh, whenever you create the smart contract, it's got a URI or URL, essentially, that tracks the extra information about the token, like the picture, uh, what the name is, the description, all that kind of stuff. And you can see an example of that here. So in this case, they've included this octopus, and this is part of the metadata. And it's basically just this JSON uh, object that has some attributes, uh, some key value pairs inside of it that describe it, right? So this, in this case, the token name is Herbie Starbelly. And uh, here's a description, is a friendly open C creature. And here's the image URL. So whenever you're creating your own token, you need a way to store this information so that you can see the picture uh, of the token like inside the wallet or something like that, okay? So uh, in order to do that, you essentially need uh, some sort of web service to return this. You know, you could do it on IPFS if you wanted to. You could store the token metadata as a JSON object on a distributed file system if you wanted it to be completely decentralized. Um, you could also uh, store it on, uh, you know, just a web server. You could do some sort of JSON API. So I'll put those here. It could be IPFS. Could also be a JSON API. All right, so it could be either of these two options. Oops, sorry. IPFS or JSON API. And, you know, uh, I say IPFS, it could be any distributed file system you want to, okay? So either of these two things would return a JSON object and that would return like the image, okay? All right, so image. And that's the image that people would expect to see inside their wallet. So just know if you want to create something like this for yourself, uh, in addition to having this smart contract, you also need a way to uh, host the image, host other metadata like the name, description. You also need to create artwork for the token itself. And that's actually something that I'm still in progress uh, for this first token that I'm releasing from Blockchain Master University. Uh, I'm working with a designer right now to get this in motion. 
uh, so you guys can open it your wallet and see a really cool uh, token whenever the program opens. All right. So I uh, hope you all like this video. That's my thought process uh, on creating my own crypto token with the ERC721 standard, my own digital asset. Um, hope you all found this helpful if you're trying to do something like this yourself. There's actually a lot more than meets the eye to this process uh, about getting this out there in the real world and getting people to use it and hold it in their wallets where they can see it instantly and stuff like that. All right. So I hope you all like this video. Again, uh, subscribe to the channel, click the like button down below and sign up for the special blockchain mastery launch event. Again, that's going to be on uh, January 29th. It's really soon. All right. There's a link down below uh, over at dappuniversity.com forward slash sign up. All right. Until next time. Thanks for watching Dapp University.